Jeg har noen store ære å sitte i bøen på en uh, fiskebåt en, uh, i uh, Cyprus River i uh, Clarkwood uh, Biosphere Reservat. Dette er uh, et stykke natur som er så verneverdig at man har fått det på en UNESCO-liste over et av de mest verdifulle områdene i, i verden, på samme måte som bryggen i Bergen er når det gjelder kulturhistorie. This is a bear track, and this is a, bear, this is a, wolf, this is a wolf right here beside it. Yeah, one of our great joys is to come up these rivers in the fall and see all the wildlife, the bears and the eagles and the wolves and the salmon all spawning. I mean, it's one of the wonders of the world. Det er det området som er verd å ta vare på her. Her går bjørnen og sulter. Det er som noen tørre skinnfiller som går rundt her og leter etter krabber i fjærsteinene. This bear should be in the rivers eating the... Salmon along with the eagles and the wolves, the cougars, the trout, the migrating birds. The wild salmon feed all the life here. And uh, without the wild salmon, we're going to lose everything that really means a lot to us. Not only our food supplies, but the wildlife that depends so much on the wild fish. It's a sad thing when you see the bears, through no fault of their own, suffering and dying because of our actions. It's appalling. In the mid-90s, the fish farms that had moved in began to cause toxic algae blooms. Uh, they were shooting the seals. The, the killer whales I was studying disappeared. Um, and then sea lice appeared all over the young wild salmon. And at first I wrote letters to the government. I wrote 10,000 pages of letters to the government. And then I realized that as a biologist, I could probably do something by actually doing the science that showed the impact of these enormous feedlots in this archipelago. And so I've written papers on what happens to the escaped salmon and, and the fact that the killer whales are gone and that the sea lice are killing the majority of the wild salmon that come out of this place. What we see here is a Canadian outlegging firm that lays out lodda for a new outlegging firm. Dette området her er et veldig uh, kritisk område for, for uh, smolten. All smolten går forbi her når den skal inn. Her uh, legger det nok en lusespredde, et lusespredde anlegg. Det ligger ett på andre siden her, det ligger ett rett her borte. Her ligger de så mye tettere enn det de gjør i Norge. Her ligger de med under en kilometer avstand. Og her, her blir uh, det produsert uh, en cirka 90 millioner lus hver eneste dag fra hver av disse anleggene som da ligger som et teppe i fjorden her, sånn at villaksen har ingen som helst sjans til å overleve. Og her bak oss legger de ut lodd for enda et nytt anlegg. Vi står nå foran uh, Mainstream sitt uh, slaktanlegg i uh, byen der vi er. Og her er det uh, masse måser. Her ser ut til å renne blodbarn rett i sjøen. Og vi er ikke sikre på om denne plassen følger de samme standardene som det norske anleggene gjør i Norge. They put them in a heavy brine solution of some with some other chemicals that kills them slowly so they will bleed out because they don't want any blood in the boat in in the fish when they get to the factory. So they die a slow death in the boat and when they get to the the dock here, they will offload the fish and then the blood water will be a huge part of what the weight is holding that boat down and that'll be pumped out through the sewer system into Tofino's water here right around the village. After the fish industry comes to this area, has there been any changes in natural things? Any changes? Yes, is there, is there a change? Well, there's lots of change, of course. There's lots and lots of changes. But if you mean like the immediate effect close to the farms is uh, basically death. Um, you told me yesterday that you're an oyster farmer. Mm -hmm. You've been there for some 20 years or 40 mm -hmm. years or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, you told us about a spawn that's coming to the oyster. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little about that? I've cleaned these off so they don't show here. But there's the... Um, Who's talking about it's not a It's not a sponge. It's actually a tunicate. Mm -hmm. It's like that. It's like a mat, a mat of tiny little creatures inside a slimy layer that they grow for mm -hmm. themselves. That's their habitat. And they'll start like that. And they start covering the oyster. And they droop down. And they look like, they look like drooping wax of just gucky orange sponge. It looks like sponge. And it basically smothers the oyster. The oyster will get this big, the sponge will cover it, the sponge will basically 
make it not possible for the oyster to properly feed, yeah. mm -hmm. and the meat will shrivel right away. And you pop this one open, and instead of being a nice big oyster, there'll just be a tiny little bit of, of skinny. So it's, it's suffocating the oyster. Basically, yeah. So you're not very happy with having the fish farms? Not at all. Unfortunately, there are no fish farms where we grow our oysters. That's, uh, thank God, because we're very worried about that. And I'm very worried personally about, about the diseases just jumping the barrier. The one thing is the pollution or the antibiotics or their, their waste. Yeah. But if they have really weird pathogens that suddenly get into the shellfish or the, or the gooey duck clams, and then, of course, the crabs. The crabs are feeding on everything. And if all yeah. the dead things are dying because of fish farm poison, and then the crabs eat them, then the crabs are going to have problems. So, no, we're not happy at all about the fish farms. We stand now in Portofino, in this Fiskerhavn, Fishman's Wharf. This small town here is a fiskerlandsby, bestående of Indianer and Kvita, who all live of the sea. Det som ser ut att ske mer och mer här nu är att det viktigaste resursgrundlaget deras är laxen och den är i färd med att försvinna och grön till det blir nog vi ganska tydlig för folk här det är uppträttare laxelus och römt uppträttsfisk. The impact that the fish farm industry have had upon the resources found within our territories is an awful impact. There is not one marine species that is in abundance as it once was. It seems like a good idea at the time, I think, when the farms first started up. It seemed like a, a, not a bad idea, and people, you know, all the consequences hadn't been thought out, and now we're starting to see these these issues, and we have to change. Something has to change, or we won't have to, Either they stay and wild fish disappear, or they leave and move into closed containment or whatever happens, and hopefully we have a chance to rebuild some of our stocks. But if we don't do something soon, there's not going to be anything to worry about. We know that we're on the way to Canadians into a biological crisis, which is one of the richest but I think the Norwegian people would be shocked to know how badly they're thought of in this country.